Hi guys, N0ECK here. As you can tell from the lack of snow on the ground, it is summertime here in Zero Land, and uh, that means it's time to play on UHF and VHF. So I'm gonna build a six meter and two meter fan dipole that's for receive only to connect to a $20 SDR that I bought from China. So what we're gonna need for this one today is some 75 ohm coax, just regular TV coax because the input on this SDR is 75 ohm. It's meant for digital TV transmissions and digital radio transmissions, but it happens to act as a IQ SDR when plugged into a computer and using a little bit of ham modified software. We're gonna use a ring terminal for the ground side and I've got the converter to get it to the PAL connector to the F connector and an F bulkhead connector that I'm going to use to connect to the antenna. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some PVC, I've got some one inch thin wall that doesn't bend too much, and I'm going to make it exactly the width of a dipole on six meters. I'm going to have a T in the middle here so that I can connect it to my mast and each side for six meters is gonna be 56 and a quarter or so. Because it's received only, the measurements aren't terribly important. And then I'm actually gonna stick off at like a odd angle, the uh, elements for 144, which are 19 and a half, right at 144. That's in the CW portion of the band. It should work pretty well, so uh, let's give it a try. Luckily I got ring terminals big enough to hold both wires. Hopefully they're big enough to hold all three things. I'll show you my idea in a second here. So since I know we can solder to these things, and this little guy right here, I'm gonna get in front of the camera. So this little guy right here is not quite easy to solder to. I'm gonna try and put this and the two wires around the tip of this, but I'm gonna cut off the ring first. Yeah, look at that, it works. <laughs> I always like to solder my ring terminals. The crimp is the mechanical connection, the solder provides a good electrical connection. It hasn't failed me yet. So there's the feed point. Should be able to uh, connect that to some RG6 and connect it up onto the support. So it decided to rain yesterday, we didn't get a chance to play, but I've got the antenna assembled and it's time to put it on the air and see what we can see, or rather hear, on six and two meters. Or maybe some other things, we'll figure out what we can see in a second. I put the antenna on top of my jackite pole, the PVC fit around the second section so I was able to raise it to about 16 feet or so. After making all the connections, it was time to fire up SDR Sharp and see what I could hear. I tried it first with the included telescoping antenna and heard the usual FM broadcast stations and NOAA weather channels. After swapping the antennas, everything got stronger, which is to be expected when the antenna is higher in the air. I discovered the antenna does have some directionality when I was homing in on what I thought was a CW beacon at 144.065 but instead it was a birdie from my good friend, the NOAA Weather Radio Tower. At my house, there are two very strong VHF broadcasters within a couple miles. The first is KARZ-FM, which puts out 15 kilowatts on 107.5 megahertz. The second is NOAA Weather Radio Station KXI-50. That one is a lot closer and puts out one kilowatt on 162.5 megahertz. It's no surprise that I hear birdies and intermod interference on every VHF radio I own. In the case of the SDR, that's all I heard. So I decided to put it up vertically and see if I could get anything on the scanner, and uh, no joy there either. So either six meters and two meters are completely dead, or out here in the prairies of southwest Minnesota, there's nothing close enough to listen to. Either way, I built an antenna, it was fun, and that's what we're here for. 7-3, join the resistance. <laughs> 